Hi, so I'm here uh, representing Giveth. My name is Griff Green, and I'm doing all the scaling research and starting uh, really pushing the scaling now agenda. And I'm here with Loredana Krista. I'm uh, from Brainbot. I've been working on micro Raiden and uh, Raiden Network. Yeah, and obviously you're one of the big names in scaling. Raiden Network is is the 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 one that's really doing it and pushing forward the agenda and has been for a while. So I'm really excited to start the state channels discussion with you guys. Uh, you guys have, in general, let me just like you guys have some big dreams with Raiden, and I know you've deployed it to Robston and it's ready for being tested. And I encourage all the DApps that are want to go with Raiden's full implementation to start playing with it, but. I really want to focus on micro rating, which is deployed to mainnet and actually ready to be used today. So if we can stay mostly on that topic, that would be cool. Uh, and a little bit about our audience. We are in this discussion, if you want background information about how state channels work and all of that jazz, uh, there's great information out there. That's not what this is. This is more a discussion uh, focused on providing information for DAP developers that have a solution that they want to scale ASAP. And maybe, of course, they don't understand all the details about the solution, but they're not rookies, and they can go look it up. So let's stay really technical and, uh, and dive deep. So mm -hmm. let's start with uh, what dApps are likely candidates to use state channels in general, and what subsections of those dApps are actually good candidates for micro -rating? Okay, j just a disclaimer first. Um, I'm new on Raiden Network, so my colleagues until now have done all the, the work. So just just uh, for people to know. I've been working mostly on Mike Raiden and some other projects. Um, okay, so state channels. With uh, state channels, the idea is that you can have an unlimited number of off-chain transactions among a um, defined set of participants. So use cases would be, for example, any application where um, you know exactly how many participants and who they are, and you have some predefined set of rules. So for example, you can build a chess game uh, because participants can agree upon the final state of, uh, of the uh, chess table and um, sign on that state after each opt-in transaction. Now with payment channels, the state changes are uh, actually digital currency balance changes for each participant. With micro in particular, uh, these payment channels are unidirectional. So you have uh, defined and unchangeable roles for each uh, channel participant. You have a sender and you have a receiver. Uh, the sender is the one that actually does the off-chain micropayments to the receiver. And the receiver is responsible for actually running the micro um, proxy server. The sender only needs something like MetaMask to uh, interact. Now, oh, nice. the general use case is the need for uh, free, fast, and frequent micropayments with a many-to-one setup, just because you have this unidirectional channel. So specifically, any application, not, not only decentralized application, but, uh, applications, but also regular non-crypto applications that offer a service to users and want to accept payments in tokens, they can use micro -rating. And the users can be human uh, or even other applications, but ideally there should be this need uh, for them to make frequent payments. It's not efficient to use micro for one-time payments, for example. Okay, so like, uh, you know, you go to the website and someone yeah. is uh, constantly paying small transactions as it goes. That's like the perfect use case. Yes, you can think about paywalled resources like news articles or research articles, or for machine to machine, um, where you want to query a payable API, like um, knowing uh, the price per kilowatt for energy, for calculating the uh, energy cost on the fly, or uh, doing some prepaid um, payments for uh, using a Wi Fi bandwidth. Mm. Yeah. OK. Well, can you explain the basics of how? a many to one rate, micro rate and payment channel would work, especially with de deposit requirements and the requirements of actually using RDN tokens. Do you call them RDN tokens? Uh, you know, yes, all that yes. kind of stuff. Yeah, that's correct. OK, so the unidirectional payment channel that micro rate uses is uh, quite simple to, to understand. So you have a sender and a receiver. The sender is the one who opens the channel, who uh, does the deposit of tokens, who can top up. 
uh, and then can do the micropayment to the receiver. And we just keep the keep track of uh, the last balance proof from the sender, which contains the total amount of tokens that the sender owes the receiver. Uh, and we use that to close the channel, or the receiver can use that to actually withdraw tokens and leave the channel open for uh, future use. Now about the tokens, uh, MicroRadon can be currently used with any ERC-20 or ERC-223 token in the sense that uh, the centralized application developers will have to deploy their, um, their own MicroRadon smart contract themselves with the token address that they want as a constructor argument. However, if they do not want to worry about contract deployment on the mainnet or they want their users to feel secure that they are actually using uh, the same contract that any, everyone else is using, and they know that that contract has been audited, then we provide this off-the-shelf solution that uses the Raiden network token, or RDN. Interesting. Yeah. So so if, if someone doesn't want to deal with uh, creating their own currency or anything, let's say it's you know some already established normal company, they can just use Raiden network off-the-shelves as their payment solution and you know, people can even use PayPal or something to put money in, and they just handle that whole thing and buy RDN tokens for them off the market. Is that yes, that's 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 the idea. The idea is to actually provide something uh, off the shelf and very easy to use, and then it can be actually very cust it, it it is customizable and flexible if uh, if you want it to be. Yeah. So if I if I have my own DApp and my own currency that I want people to use, I can actually just fork your code and change one argument basically and boom i have it micro raiden working with i don't know micro swarm city tokens or something yes yes you can you can do that just you just have to take care of the deployment and uh, what yeah ah that's very interesting that's very useful so uh is do you offer uh, pretty hands-on support for early adopters uh, how do you inter integrate with people that are starting to use use this service uh, yes, so we are currently working on providing good documentation and tutorials, and developers can use our MicroRate and Gitter chat to uh, ask questions anytime. Um, and we actually encourage developers that want to use MicroRate to get in contact with us because we want to build a good framework alongside the community. So yes, we offer support. Do you have many people that are starting to use it? Uh, yes, we know a couple of projects that have, have started to use MicroRadon and even some that have started to port it to Java, for example. And uh, we are in contact with them and keep them updated. Oh, that's, that's very cool. OK, good. Uh, and then I know that there's an active bug bounty going on. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes. Yeah. First, we would like to thank all the people that have reviewed the contracts. Uh, during the bug bounty. The bug bounty has ended for now, and um, th there were no serious bugs found, but however, um, it did trigger some code changes, and you can find more about that on our uh, blog posts and GitHub issues because we try to document everything. Uh, we are currently waiting for the sign type data um, EIP uh, 712. Uh, it's a signature standard proposal. And we are waiting for it to be finalized because um, it will require some minimal smart contract changes. So after that, we'll have another bug bounty period. And only after that, we can make sure that we can have a stable production ready release. And we want to make sure that what we're offering is secure. And we also want a good user experience for the senders because this uh, signature standard you can see exactly what you are signing, and the risks of using a malicious, decentralized application are much lower. Uh, that's that's really good. Are you guys pushing that standard, or is there another group that's really pushing that? Uh, for now, there's a, another group that's pushing the standard, but we are watching watching it closely. And if we see anything that we would need and it's not there, or we can, yeah, we'll contribute. So if someone starts using this and all of a sudden you guys find a, a decent bug in in the system through this next bug bounty, how what, what would happen like if you needed to upgrade to a new contract? How would a DAP deal with that? Can you ponder? Yes. Uh, at this point, um, if we upgrade the contract, we don't actually migrate the channel data automatically. So the channel participants would have to close their channels on the old contract and open new ones on the new contract. 
Um, in terms of the gas cost, this is not actually that bad. Uh, it would be like um, 86,000 gas units per channel close. Um, but we have thought about this and we actually have the process documented in an issue. It usually boils down to do you offer an, an immutable contract for people to use or um, where they actually know what to expect in the future or um, offer a contract that might change. So in the second option, you also have to start thinking about whether you force an upgrade for your users, allowing them to choose or allowing them to choose and implement some kind of consent system. So that's th these are the dilemmas. But for now, we've decided to stick with the simple and clearer path of having an immutable contract. Good. Yeah, I mean, uh, keeping it simple is always it's, the way. So that sounds reg good. The regular updates for the microRAID and proxy server uh, package can be made without any issues. Cool. Uh, can you go into more of the details on what uh, DAP would need to use uh, for both scenarios? So it's kind of two questions. Uh, so, like, actually, if uh, if I'm uh, you know Newsweek and I want people to pay in RAID and tokens to start uh, viewing my website, then what would I? What would they actually need to do to implement this? Like step one, step two. Uh, yes, um, I'll actually show you some code examples uh, to understand it better. But first, um, let me give you a bit of, of details about what components we actually have. Okay. Um, so MicroRadian has uh, the a Python proxy server, has the smart contract, and we also built. Uh, two client libraries, one for JavaScript and one for Python. Now, the proxy server is the core that actually handles the off-chain payment logic. And the receiver needs to run this in order to be able to uh, receive micropayments. We've made it in a form of a Python PyPy package, so it's very easy to install and use and run. And with just a couple of lines of code, um, you can already bridge your, your API that you have uh, with microradens, so we can make it payable. Um, the proxy also comes with some tools to help the help the receiver close all the channels in case it needs to, or to uh, withdraw all the tokens that he has in the channels. Um, yeah, and then you have the smart contract, uh, the one that stores the channel information on chain, uh, and you have an interface for opening, topping up, closing the channels, withdrawing tokens. What's nice about the smart contract um, is that you can use a delegate for doing these things, uh, for opening, topping up, and for the cooperative close. So this kind of opens up more features that can be built on top of microradon. That's cool. Can you talk about the cooperative close? That's interesting. Um, yes, uh, but can I can I finish with the components first? Absolutely. So, okay. um, so then you have uh, the two client libraries, um, and these are to provide inter uh, a good interface for the sender to use the system. The JavaScript uh, client library, we have this as an NPM package, so it's also very easy to install and use. So it contains all the microradon related logic. So if you want to actually customize the UI, you can do that. You can have everything that you need in this, in this library. Um, and then you have um, the Python client. This can be used for machine to machine scenarios. Um, because the, the other one, the JavaScript one, is like a paywall. You manually open and top up channels. You can see that in our demo videos. But the Python client can be used for machine to machine. So you just give it some configurations, some limits to the tokens. It opens, it tops up channels automatically uh, for you. And you just, but it needs to be run on a sender's machine and needs at least an Ethereum light client. Oh, okay. We have used this for a demo with a, a querying ether price in US dollars, and I've also used it for a drone demo that I, I made recently at a Berlin Ethereum meetup. Um, so now, uh, either the cooperative close or the, um, the code examples to run through uh, what, what do you want to? OK, well, cooperative close. And then okay. also, I'm curious about, um, I think it piggybacks well off of, maybe we'll start with this before we do cooperative close, uh, what would someone need to do to fork uh, microradian if they want to use their own currency? Because uh, <laughs> th they have to do all those services still that you just explained for someone who's using microradian. What extra piece do they need to do if they want to fork it? OK, um, I can answer to, um, to this question right now. Uh, aside from handling uh, the 
token code or, or what and deploying the smart the micro and smart contract with the token address they wouldn't need to do anything else wow. okay so well, if, if it's if it's the same uh, interface as we use now if it's another interface for transferring the tokens uh, they need to change they need to change a little bit of code mainly the smart contract so if for example because we use ERC20 ERC223 if the interface of the token is different than um, mm. than this you need to modify a bit from the smart contracts where exact exactly where you do the token transfers and then probably uh, the client code that also handles this but the, the proxy server remains totally unchanged nice well that's really that's really cool you guys have made a very modular system okay so cooperative close cooperative close and um can you see my screen? I think yeah. so. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have, so this is part of our uh, current documentation. And you can see a bit of, um, th this is the smart contract part. And you can see how you can open a channel top up. I'm not going to show you this now because anyone can, uh, can look at it. But here we have a nice diagram to kind of show uh, what happens. So for example, you open a channel, channel is created, uh, you have some off-chain transfers. And then what happens when you need to close the channel? So we have two. We have the cooperative close and uncooperative close. What does cooperative close mean? It means that aside from the balance proof, which is signed by the sender already with the last balance, you also need the receiver's uh, closing signature on, on, the same, on the same data. So if you have this, you can close the channel immediately and you don't go through a challenge period. So uh, this can be called by the sender directly, by the receiver, and by any delegate that you want. Oh, okay. If, if you want a bit of uh, details about the uncooperative close, uh, in very short words, uh, the the sender can, can call close. Let's say that the receiver is not online. So he can just call close with his balance proof. And then you just have a period where um, the receiver, in, in case the sender didn't send the correct balance proof, the receiver can come in and say, OK, this is the last balance proof that I, that I received. And then the channel is automat automatically closed. Or if the receiver is still offline, after the challenge period has ended, then also the, the sender can call a uh, settled channel. Hmm. So it's, yeah. In, in application, though, the receiver is going to be some large company that can probably maintain a, a node's uptime, right? Is that kind of the assumed? Yes, that's, that's the assumed idea. OK. So this is really just if they decide yes. to close their business and run away, then the then there's no problem. Still. Nobody loses his tokens. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, on the and on the UI on the UI side, uh, is there what about the wallet for managing off-chain balances within the channel? I assume that's also pretty easy to fork and customize. Yes, that's we provide that JavaScript npm package with all the logic. You just need to customize the UI a little bit. Is there anything that people should be careful about? Any potential, you know, common failure mechanisms that you might see? Uh, not microridden specific. Um, yeah, they, they should take care of things like decimals, for example. Because, but this, these are the usual decentralized application issues that you can have. Yeah. Okay. The token decimals to not. You know, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Okay, and how much gas does it cost to open and close the channel? Uh, depositing is just transfer an event, but then withdrawing. Um, okay, so for opening a channel, uh, you have um, about ninety thousand uh, gas costs. Um, you do if you use the ERC two hundred and twenty three interface. You open the channel and transfer the tokens in the same transaction. Uh, if you use if you use uh, the ERC twenty, it costs a little bit more, like one hundred and twenty um, thousand. Uh, topping up is around sixty thousand gas cost. And that's just because that's how much it costs to transfer a rating token, pretty much. Um, yes, and you also need to uh, 
to modify the deposit variable because uh, so the actual channel data that we store is um, how many tokens you have as a deposit and then the uh, the block number at which the channel was open because this is part of the channel um, ID. Okay. Yeah. Then you have the cooperative close, which, which is the best case scenario you, because you have only one transaction. It, it's uh, eighty six thousand, and the withdrawal, um, the first withdrawal, is a little big, uh, a little bit higher, um, around seventy thousand, because you also need to store um, on chain how much, um, how, how many tokens you have already withdrawn. But then uh, the subsequent ones are like fifty thousand, uh, guess. Uh, these are all very reasonable gas prices, so that's uh, that's pretty efficient. And uh, uh, well, actually, my next question was about the dispute resolution process, but you kind of already explained that. Uh, is yeah. there any other details on that that you think are relevant to people? Mm, no, not really. Okay, and then uh, when Raiden is implemented, DAP tokens will be able to be used directly in state channels. Uh, through Raiden, is that correct? Yes. So if a DAP starts using micro Raiden right now, but then later wants to transition to uh, a native token using Raiden, how would that transition end up? Currently, there's no way to migrate users from micro Raiden to Raiden network, uh, other than just closing the channels on micro Raiden and opening, if necessary, new ones on uh, the Raiden network. They're just different systems, and but I think that micro Raiden channels are efficient enough for this to actually not matter in terms of cost. Okay, yeah. And so you in when Raiden is developed, do you imagine people still using micro Raiden, and then Raiden just being like basically these are two separate projects? Um, yes, if the use case remains the same, frequent payments, they might actually continue using micro Raiden if at, at least. At first, can you can you just dive in very short, briefly, and then we'll end the end the call. But mm -hmm. uh, very briefly into the Raiden solution uh, and how it differs from Micro Raiden. Okay, so Micro Raiden has um, unidirectional channels, like I said. Raiden network channels are bidirectional. But what's actually nice about MicroRaiden is that you can use the whole network of channels. So you don't necessarily need to have an open channel with, uh, with the person that you want to send tokens to, the person or company or service or whatever you want. It can route the payments through the network. So uh, because I said with MicroRaiden, uh, one-time payments are not very efficient. You have to do frequent ones. With Raiden Network, this doesn't, doesn't even matter. Another uh, difference would be that for micro Raiden, these, these off-chain payments are free, just because you don't need intermediaries. With Raiden Network, it would also depend on, on some fees to actually use other people's channels. Hmm. It's, yeah. These are some of the, of the differences between the systems. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. I mean, it uh, sounds like it's ready to use now, which is really exciting for people who are looking to scale their DAP. The ecosystem has grown to the point where there are real DAPs that need to get going. So thank you guys so much for your work. Uh, will you be coming to uh, Barcelona on March 6th? Um, I am uh, not sure. Oh, we are as a company. I'm not sure if I'm personally coming. Oh, come on. Uh, but um, yeah, what I wanted to say is that the complete class of micropayments for APIs can be built on Ethereum based micropayments now. So check out the project, give us feedback, and you, can, you don't have to look any further than MicroAidon for fast, free, and frequent payments. Oh, what, here. A, what a tagline. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, well, and, and uh, whether you come or not, you're just going to miss out on the party if you don't show up. But there's a big event on March 6th that if you guys are interested in learning more about Raiden uh, or Counterfactual or, or also all the bridge uh, chain solutions, there's going to be a great small little gathering that's uh, specifically for dApps that have something to scale right now. 
So if you are able to come to Barcelona on March 6th, there's going to be some links down below so that you can get that information for the application to come. And hopefully, uh, Laura Donna will bless us with her presence. Um, but uh, either way, Raiden will have a lot to say. So if you want to implement Raiden's solution, come to Barcelona. And thank you so much. And I will uh, talk to you soon. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.